This video demonstrates a microsurgical resection of a giant T11, T12, Conus cauda equina schwannoma. Our patient is a 53-year-old female with paraparesis and motor strength 3 out of 5, inability to walk, urinary retention, patchy hypesthesia in lower extremities, and severe back and bilateral leg pain. MRI of the lumbar spine revealed a large uniformly enhancing mass at the T11, T12 level. Differential diagnoses included schwannoma, meningioma, ependymoma, myxopapillary ependymoma, and metastasis. The patient opted for surgery because with a large tumor in the spinal canal, total resection removes the space-occupying lesion, prevents further tumor growth, and prevents worsening of an already severe neurological deficit. The patient was brought to the OR and placed under general endotracheal anesthesia and intubated. She was turned into the prone position. Necessary equipment included microsurgical instruments, neuromonitoring, C-arm, ultrasonic aspirator, high-speed drill, dural sutures, and lig eclipse for the arachnoid. Intraoperative neurophysiological monitoring was performed continuously. The posterior thoracic area was prepped and draped, and C-arm fluoroscopy confirmed T10 to T12 extension of the incision. C-arm and AP projection was used for the determination of the level using the ribs as orientation as the patient was positioned on a carbon radiolucent table. Laminectomy T11 and T12 was performed using a diamond drill and carousant rongeur. The microscope was brought in. Gel foam powder was used to achieve hemostasis in the epidural space. The dura was opened by a surgical knife and with pot scissors and tacked up to the surrounding soft tissue with 4O Neuralon stitches. Initial exposure shows that the tumor is covered by some of the cauda equina nerve roots. The arachnoid is opened with nerve hook and scissors in order to allow the mobilization of these nerve roots. Liga clips were applied to hold the arachnoid membrane to the dura. The tumor was covered with spinal nerves and was exposed initially in the left caudal part of the surgical field. The exposed part of the inferior tumor capsule has been coagulated and the cotton patties are placed around the circumference of the tumor for protection. The first step in the microsurgical resection of the tumor is coagulation and opening of the tumor capsule with a bipolar and 15 blade. The tough tumor capsule is sharply incised to allow internal decompression. The initial debulking of the tumor has been performed using micro scissors, bipolar, and tumor forceps to send enough tissue for histological analysis, including a frozen section. Blunt and sharp dissection with gentle traction and counter traction facilitates the development of the dissection plane. With micro scissors, we provided samples for frozen section. The preliminary pathohistological diagnosis confirms the diagnosis of the schwannoma. The caudal pole of the tumor can now be clearly seen. We started the dissection from the lower part as it was free from the cauda equina roots. Using bipolar and micro scissors, the tumor is released on its inferior margin from the surrounding nerves of the cauda equina. Bipolar coagulation shrinks and devascularizes the tumor. Yashargil controlled suction was used. Following this, further piecemeal resection of the solid tumor parts is performed. 
Stepwise resection of the solid parts of the tumor along with the capsule allows for more secure internal decompression. Deep bulking of the tumor is continued using an ultrasonic aspirator. This allows for greater and safer mobilization of the tumor in the surgical field. The schwannoma is now released at its cranial pole using bipolar coagulation and micro scissors. Once mobilized, further dissection and debulking with a microblade, micro scissors, and an ultrasonic aspirator are performed. Deep bulking of the tumor and its internal decompression allows for mobilization of the tumor and identification of the tumor nerve of origin, as well as corresponding nerves. Each segmental dorsal and ventral root share a common arachnoid sheet. Dissection reveals the ventral and dorsal nerve root. In this case, the left dorsal T12 nerve root is the tumor origin, so the left T12 ventral nerve root is referred to as the corresponding root. The ventral corresponding nerve root is intact and can be preserved by careful and meticulous dissection. The tumor single sensory nerve root of origin is not functional and is incorporated into the tumor. It is usually not possible and not necessary to preserve it. After dissection of the corresponding root off of the tumor, the tumor nerve origin has been coagulated and divided. Direct nerve stimulation previously confirmed the non-functional nature of the tumor nerve origin. Gross total resection of the tumor has been successfully performed. The dura was closed with 4-0 Neuralon running stitches. An application of previously harvested abdominal fat graft was used to prevent CSF leak and or pseudomeningocele formation. Intraoperative neurophysiologic monitoring with EMG, MEP, and SSEP was intact until the very end. Post-operative MRI showed complete resection of the tumor. The patient neurologically recovered fully after surgery.